Hi, this is Manos Brilakis from the Minneapolis Heart Institute and the Cardiovascular Innovations Foundation, presenting video 30.6 for the Manual of Percutaneous Coronary Interventions. This is on balloons. Lesion preparation is the ninth of the 14 steps of percutaneous coronary intervention, and it is a critical step in most lesions as it facilitates stent delivery and stent expansion. And balloon is the most commonly used and easiest form of lesion preparation. In this video, we'll discuss the various types of balloons. There are actually eight different types of balloons. The standard balloons, either compliant or non-compliant, small balloons, plaque modification balloons, trapping balloons, the osteal flask balloon, drug-coated balloons, the very high-pressure balloon, and the intracoronary lithotripsy balloon. The last two are not currently available for clinical use in the United States. Standard balloons are used in the majority of cases, Compliant balloons are more deliverable. Non-compliant balloons are less deliverable, but they can be inflated at higher pressure without uh, increasing in diameter as much, and therefore they reduce the dissections. And non-compliant balloons is what is used in most cases for stand post dilatation. Small balloons, there are several different types. The smallest one, 0.85 millimeters, not currently available in the US, is the nano balloon. But there is 1.0 millimeter balloon in the US, the Subfire Pro, and other small balloons from various manufacturers at 1.2 to 1.5 millimeter diameter, as well as the threader balloon and the glider balloon. Small balloons are the first step when we have a balloon uncrossable lesion. These are lesions that the wire goes through, but the balloon does not follow. Having a small balloon, such as the Subfire Pro, is the first step followed by rupture of this balloon and that's only for small balloons 1.0 to 1.5 millimeter balloons that can modify the proximal cap of the lesion and facilitate subsequent balloon delivery. The balloons that should be used for this are again the small ones the 1.0 millimeter balloon is preferred with the longest possible length because in those small balloons the marker is in the middle of the balloon and therefore having a longer uh, balloon length makes it uh, for more of the balloon to be delivered past the lesion before reaching the marker, which is uh, the highest profile portion of the balloon. This is the Subfire Pro. This is again the smallest currently available balloon in the United States that is used very often for balloon and crossable lesions. Threader is a combination of balloon and microcatheter, has a highly supportive shaft, that increases deliverability. Most of the times we use the monorail version and it is a 1.2 by 12 millimeter balloon. Another balloon that can be used especially when trying to advance a balloon through the struts of a stand is the glider balloon that has a skived tip that can present different configurations to the stand struts and can advance through small vessels or through stand struts. How about the lesions that are balloon undilatable? These are the lesions that high pressure inflations with non-compliant balloons fail. Usually the next step is to use a plaque modification balloon and three of them are currently available in the US, the NGO Sculpt, the Cutting Balloon and the Chocolate Balloon. The NGO Sculpt is a balloon that has nitinol wires wrapped around it. When inflated, the balloon is pushing those wires against the coronary plaque, modifying the lesion. The chocolate balloon is similar, but actually has the opposite effect. There is a cage around the balloon, and once the balloon is inflated, the balloon essentially protrudes between this cage and the, the, the vessel is actually seeing the protruded segments of the balloon. The cutting balloon has uh, small atherotomes embedded into it. And what is special about this balloon is that it is hard to deliver. And also when you deliver it, you want to inflate very slowly, one atmosphere every five seconds, to allow enough time for the balloon to unwrap. And also when deflated, allow enough time for the balloon to rear up without damaging the balloon. It can, however, provide good modification of the lesion. And actually, all of these balloons, the plaque modification balloons, 
are less likely to have the watermelon seeding effect because the atherotomes or the wires that are around the balloon uh, minimize balloon movement and anchor the balloon against the plaque. This is another balloon called the blimp that is currently available in Europe. The fourth category of balloons are the trapping balloons and there is only one available in the US, the Trapper from Boston Scientific. There are other ones available internationally. The Trapper balloon is unique in that it does not have a wire lumen, which makes it lower profile. It is advanced inside the guide catheter next to equipment in order to perform the trapping technique and allow fixing of the guide wire while removing microcatheters or other equipment. Number five type of balloon is the Ostial Flas balloon. Again, this is a unique balloon. It is actually two balloons combined. There is a more distal balloon that is sized one to one with the proximal vessel. And then there is a larger balloon that inflates at low pressure up to eight atmospheres. And what this balloon does is it flares the struts of the stand against the ostium of the stand. And by doing that, then repeat engagement of that vessel is easier. We don't have the stand protruding all the way in the aorta, hindering repeat engagement with catheters. Drug-coated balloons can be very useful, especially for coronary instant stenosis and also for small vessels. There are no coronary drug-coated balloons available in the, US, in the US currently, but some of the peripheral drug-coated balloons can be used off-label. However, they do have high profile and uh, they are difficult to deliver. There's one balloon called the SIS uh, OPN balloon. This can be a very high balloon rated burst pressure is 35 atmospheres that can help uh, dilate balloon and dilatable lesions. But again, it's not available currently in the United States. And finally, there is the intravascular lithotripsy balloon. Uh, this balloon is not approved yet for coronary in the use in the US. It is approved for peripheral use. And this uh, balloon uh, emits essentially uh, high uh, frequency waves to the wall of the vessel, cracking the calcium. This is for circumferentially heavily calcified lesions. And by doing that, it can facilitate expansion of those heavily calcified lesions. So in summary, there are several classes of balloons. Standard balloons, compliant and non-compliant, are used in the majority of cases. But awareness and availability of the other types of balloons, such as the small balloons, the plaque modification balloons, the trapping balloons, the osteal flask, and in the future drug-coated, very high pressure and intracoronary lithotripsy balloons, can provide a wide armamentarium to facilitate PCI of complex lesions with uh, safety and efficacy. Thank you.